Okay, so equality tests are are two things the same. Are is in terms of language, they have the same language. So let's say two DFAs, do they have the same language or not? Let's start with DFAs. DFAs are easy, right? Why? Because what we can do is as well. I mean, they're not very easy. <laughs> How would you know if two DFAs are are easy? There is one way, and we would have to remember a few things about set theory. So the first thing is um, set difference. Set difference, you can implement that with the um, intersection. Just pause for a second and, and pull up the code so that you can see. Okay, so this is the code for uh, subtraction of DFAs that I have in the project that I shared in the course web page. And the basic idea is that it's the product, you do, you do the product of two DFAs, highlighting. And then the only thing you have to do is, what is subtraction? It's basically all the states that are in Q1, but are not in Q2. That's what subtraction means. All the words that are in A, but that are not in A. Those are the ones. Because we are removing all the words that are in B from A. So what we get back, what we get left, we get all the words that are in B, A, but are not in B. That's what subtraction is. So how do we know if two things are the same? So it's very easy. What you do is you subtract all things that are in B from A. Okay. And from B, you subtract all the things that are in A. So what will you get? Let's say you have things that are in A, but that are not in B. So you have that, then you would have something left here. I remove all the things that are in B, some things are still in A. If that's the case, then this would be subtraction returns a DFA, right? So this whole thing, this subtraction operation would return a DFA, that contains all the words that are in A but are not in B. That's what is highlighted in blue. Okay, then union, what is getting is, you're doing the union, so you're getting that, plus all the words that are in B but are not in A. So what does this give you? This gives you all the words that are in A that are not in B and the words that are in B that are not in A. That's what the triangle is doing. Symmetric difference. Okay, so these are the words that are different, right? The ones that we don't care about. So if there are some, at least one word here in the result, resulting DFA, this means that there is a word that is either on A, not in B, or in B and not in A. And if that's the case, that this is just the language of things that we don't care about. If you want to check if two things are equal, then the set difference or the symmetric difference would be if they're the same, right, the, the difference of both would be zero. So if it's zero, we do know how to test if something is zero, right? We do an emptiness test. We talked about emptiness tests before. So how do we know if two things are equal? We, again, just to recap, we subtract A from B, B from A, we do the union of that, and then we test if the resulting automaton is empty. If it is empty, then the two DFAs are equivalent. If not empty, then there is something that differs from either. And that's actually what I do to in mini test two to know whether, you know, remember you had those suggestions that would say uh, you have to reject this word or you would have to accept this word. That's how you know. You know, let's say that A and B, A is the solution and B is your code, the code that you guys submitted to great scope. So what do I do? I take from the solution everything that is in your code. So all the words that your DFA, the DFA or NFA that you submitted, I subtract that from, from the solution, the correct answer. So those are the words that you should be accepting and you are not accepting. So what about B from A? So then I take your automaton and I subtract the solution. All the words that are in your automaton, that are not in A, those should be rejected. So that's why you have that hint saying you should be rejecting these words. So then how do I give you the, the, the output? I check if this subtraction is empty, right? If it's not empty, then 
I need to find the shortest string or, or some string that is in this TDFA, and that's what I put in the hint. And if this subtraction is not empty, then I find a string in the resulting DFA. That's what I produce, and that's what I uh, output in grade scope. So this is quite useful, for instance, to just check serial to know. So because I can decide whether two DFAs are the same or not, I can therefore write an algorithm that for any DFA that you write, I always know whether or not it's correct. It's equivalent to the solution. That's how great scope works. Okay, that's great. That's really cool. So what if it were two regular expressions? Well, you can always convert regular expressions to NFAs and NFAs to DFAs. So EQ, DFA, EQ, NFA, and EQ regular expressions, they're all decidable because you can convert everything down to it. So what about context-free grammars? Well, we know that knowing whether a grammar is empty or not, that's decidable. But the whole thing is undecidable. So why? Well, we could try to use semantic drif difference, but the problem is that symmetric difference is rep can be represented as intersection as well. And if you think about it as intersection, both semantic, uh, sorry, both set subtraction and intersection are, they do not, they're not closed in context-free languages. So what does that mean? Here is an example. It, it says that, let's say that A is a context-free language. That, that is to say, there is some context-free grammar that represents it. And this language A is saying that, you know, every X and Y are the same. So it's the classic example A of N, B of N, right? What is B? B is the same, but there's something in between. It's saying A of N, something, something in between that could potentially be empty, and then C of N. So this you can represent in using a grammar, both of them, A and B. So they're both not regular and they're both context-free. That I hope you can um, acknowledge. So let's think about what is the intersection of these two languages. The intersection is the conjunction of these two conditions, right? So you have x equals y and x equals z. So now what do we get? Well, we get x equals y equals z. So you get A of n, B of n, C of n. And as we know, this is an example of a language that is not context. So intersection may produce things that are not context-free. So if it's not context-free, that means it's not defined, right? It, it would produce something that is not a context-free grammar. So you cannot do a decidable intersection. And EQ, you cannot compare if two context-free grammars are equal. Which means, if I were to do a mini test three, I'm not doing, but let's say I were to do that, and I would have no way of knowing whether the grammar you supply to grade scope would be the same as my solution, the only way for you to know that is by proving it with the proof. Otherwise, there is no way. What you can do is you can test with lots of inputs. You could throw a million inputs and see, be convinced. That's usually how we test if two programs are the same, if the, the student's solution it makes sense, right? We just write tests. So that's what you would need to do if you want to test if a context free grammar equals. And that's it for today's lesson. Hope you had fun.